Happy fall, y'all. Welcome to Exploration Place. My name is Victoria, and today we're going to dissect a pumpkin. We're gonna get down and dirty and rip out those guts and see what's all inside. Now, before we open up our pumpkin, let's take a look at some of the parts of the outside of our pumpkin. Now, you can see this pumpkin's pretty big, but it has some similarities between all squash. So it has its skin, which is all this nice orange area, and all of these lines are called ribs. Now, they don't really do what our ribs do, but they do help with some of the structure of the pumpkin. We also have a stem right here, which is what connects our pumpkin to the vine, which you can see there are little pieces right here at the end that are parts of the vine, and those little bits have already dried up because our pumpkin's no longer attached to it. Now, if we turn our pumpkin around, we can see this part is really flat. And that's because when pumpkins grow, they grow on their side like this. And we have the pumpkin part that's attached to the vine. And then this is called the blossom end. And that's because that's where the blossom would grow from. So our pumpkin grows in between where the blossom has already come out. That's the flower that happens before the pumpkin grows. And then it's attached to the vine on the other side. Let's go ahead and sit this puppy back up. Now that we've got our pumpkin all resituated, it's time to cut into our pumpkin. So traditionally, we cut from the top, though some people say you should cut from the bottom of the pumpkin because it makes it last longer, but we're gonna do a traditional top cut. So I'm gonna take my knife, and I'm just gonna cut a big circle all the way around the top so that we can get inside and see what's going on there. Well, it looks like we've cut into the top of our pumpkin. Are you guys ready to open it up? All right, let's see. Ew, what is that? Well, those are the seeds. So a pumpkin is actually a fruit and it provides those seeds so that we can get more pumpkins to grow. But if the seeds are inside of the pumpkin, how do they get out? How do we get new pumpkins? Well. There are lots of animals that like to eat pumpkins, including deer and possums and rabbits, and they will eat these lovely little seeds once the rind gets a little bit softer at the end of the year, and then they'll travel around, and then sooner or later, they'll have to go to the bathroom, and they will poop out those seeds in a different location so that those pumpkins can grow in the wild somewhere away from the big, healthy pumpkin plants that are already growing. Well, there are some other parts of our pumpkin that we have to talk about. Let me grab a big old chunk here. And that is these strands. Do you see those strands that are attached to our pumpkin seeds? And those are the fibrous strands. And each of those fibrous strands attaches to one seed, and that's how each seed gets the nutrients it needs to grow. So while the pumpkin is still attached to the vine through the stem, all those seeds are still able to grow. Once it's been detached or harvested so that we can cut it open and harvest its insides, then, well, they don't grow anymore. They can also be eaten. A lot of the, like I said, those animals like to eat them raw, but you can even roast them up and give them a good salting and they make really delicious snacks. Now that we've talked about the insides, let's go ahead and scoop out all those seeds. So I'm gonna start by clearing off the top here with my spoon. And then I'm just gonna set that top part off to the side while I clean out everything else. It's easier said than done. All right. Okay, so now that that's done, we gotta really just get in and do the nitty gritty. So I'm gonna actually take off my watch here and I'm just gonna start scooping out those insides. And we're gonna get all of the seeds and all of those fibrous strands out of our pumpkin. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. 
Okay, once you get most of the seeds and fibrous strands out, you may need to use a spoon to get the rest of those out. You can use a plastic spoon, but I prefer a metal spoon for this part because it can get in right in there and scrape everything off. All right, guys, I think that I have gotten it good enough that we can see the insides pretty well. Now you'll see these little bits here, and some of this is some of those fibrous strands, along with we're starting to get into some of the pulp of our pumpkin. So the pulp is the part that we can eat, other than the seeds, of course. So the pulp is after that fibrous section into about right here where the rind starts going. So that's about how much you get of your pumpkin that you can actually roast and eat up, just like any other squash. So have you ever had an acorn squash or a butternut squash or a spaghetti squash? That one kind of looks like this, but all the way through. All of those are different types of squash that we can actually eat. And we do that by roasting them because they, they are okay to eat raw. They're just not very good raw, in my opinion. But we just roast them up, and then you can make whatever you want out of it. So just to recap on all of our pumpkin anatomy, we have, if I can get this to sit in there properly, we have the outside of our pumpkin that has the skin and the ribs. We have our stem, which is where attached to the vine, and we have our blossom bottom, where the blossom was. When we open up our pumpkin, we have the seeds and the fibrous strands, and we have our pulp, which is that section we can eat. Now, you might be asking, okay, well, we just dissected a pumpkin. What can we do with the pumpkin? Well, there's a couple options. One, if you happen to buy a pie pumpkin, which is good for roasting and making into a pumpkin pie, you can do that. Or in my case, we can just carve it up. So I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna clean my hands, and then we're gonna come back and carve ourselves a jack-o'-lantern. All right, we're gonna need a Sharpie for this and then that same knife you used earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my lid off here so that I can flip my pumpkin the way that I want in order to get a good jack-o'-lantern carving. Now, jack-o'-lantern needs three specific things. It needs eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And you can make them look however you like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give a, do a traditional jack-o'-lantern with triangles for eyes and an upside-down triangle for a nose. And then we're gonna give, we're gonna do a little, a little buck tooth smile here. All right, how does that look everybody? I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's get to carving. This is gonna take a minute, but be careful. Oh, I broke a tooth off. Sad day. Well, he's gonna have one tooth now. And then once you get all that out, we can just <laughs> clean it up just a little bit. And of course, for your jack-o'-lantern, you should definitely put a light inside of it. I recommend using one that is electric so that you don't have to worry about any fire. But there's our jack-o'-lantern. There you go. All right, friends, now that we've dissected our pumpkin and turned it into a jack-o'-lantern, it's time for us to say goodbye. So thank you so much for joining me here at Exploration Place for our fall activity. We hope that you guys had a great time. And if you're interested, go ahead and put in the comments whether or not you like pumpkin spice. Hmm. I know I personally, eh, I could go without it, but it can be pretty good in some things especially pumpkin pie. All right, friends, we will see you next time. Bye.